Can I just say that the animation in Jujutsu Kaisen is so damn good. I mean, this is smooth as butter animation. It doesn't have to even look nearly as good for a fight like this or the fights that we saw, but it's just so incredible every single week to see something that generally I'm not too excited for in any sort of like battle series where you have like school tournament arcs. I'm not the biggest fan of them, but I'm also not like, I see them and I'm like, oh no, I gotta push away. No, I'm just like, oh, okay, this will be fine. But I'm really enjoying Jujutsu Kaisen's take on what I usually consider to be pretty mediocre content, but they're turning it into something that still is just as memorable as anything that came before. Sure, in terms of themes and darker subject matter, it doesn't live up to that, but you can even just look at the Maki and my content in this week's episode and the family dynamic that's brewing there, and it's pretty emotionally engaging. Well, just if you simply just mute the audio, don't look at the subtitles, just watch it for visuals alone, you're bound to have a good time as well. It just really feels like one of those things that I heard different opinions walking into this arc saying that it's not a bad arc, but it's not going to be as intense as what we've seen before. I do feel like potentially MAPPA like upped the game and probably made it even more intense with their amazing visual directing because this is one of those things that doesn't feel like, oh, you're just excited to move past it. It feels like, oh, we're getting characterization for characters like Mai and Maki, but then we're also getting all these amazing fight scenes that are incredibly memorable. Just the idea of how they're continuing to find new ways to up the ante in terms of how you can use these abilities in order to counter or just completely destroy your opponent. You have a witch fight here, which you're getting some great dialogue in there as well, just saying like, why would you want to be following and trying to protect someone who's a curse when there's all these people who are trying to just to survive and she's talking all this BS about females and what they have to do and how much hard it is for them to survive and you're kind of seeing like if you're put from her perspective what she's saying makes sense given the circumstances but then you have Nobra come in saying you know what when I dress up I feel hot as shit but when I'm a badass I feel strong as shit as she is pretty much destroying everything. The idea of using kind of like voodoo dolls taking a bristle from the broom in order to completely crash and burn and the fact that she actually took the initiative to say hey you know if I use my hammer she's going to die. So she uses a toy hammer, and if it wasn't for that bullet, she would have easily won. And the fight between Mai and Maki, I thought was, without a doubt, the best part of the episode, because not only do you get, once again, new and improved animation, you're saying, oh, what we thought was really good in this episode, that looks okay now in comparison to basically bullets flying and you're cutting bullets in half with a sword. And the difference in seeing how the backstory plays a really huge factor into understanding characters who you probably would have assumed, at least I know I did, that were like, oh, you know, Mai and Maki, I like them, but like, what's going to be the defining trait that's really going to say, oh, I am so excited to see more with them, or I feel something bad for a character who's been kind of a bitch this whole time. And to get the scene where she's crying and you get the backstory about how twins are generally considered to be not the greatest in a family because... They usually lack something, and in the case of both Maki and Mai, they both lack a talent that the other has or hasn't. But to see the difference of ideas of one wanting to be the leader of a clan and the other just wanting to enjoy a simple life with their sister, and feeling how like she's been kind of ripped away from the life that she wants, and that kind of has turned her quite bitter because you understand from her perspective, right? You know, she just wanted to have a simple life with her sister but her sister wanted to do something else. None of what either of them said is incorrect, or I think you could say is horrible of what they're doing. The idea of wanting to live a simple life where you don't have to put your life in danger, completely justifiable. Most people wouldn't want to do that. But then there's those who do have a disadvantage, who do want to be something extraordinary and want to put their life on the line. They don't want to drag their sister into it, but at the same time, they have to do what they believe in. And that's what makes that fight so great, is that rather than just seeing like, oh, you're looking at a witch getting attacked by a hammer, or you're looking at a sword going up against a revolver, what you're actually seeing are characters believing in what they're doing, feeling like they're fighting enemies, or they're, they're trying to kill a curse, and that's what people do. Or in the case of two sisters, one feeling like she has to prove herself, which we learn in this episode, if she doesn't prove herself during this tournament, it's pretty much impossible for her to rise up the ranks because the family's already kind of disowned her, so to speak. So this is her one and only shot by the looks of it, where you have another just saying like, stop, I just want to be safe and I don't want to have to do this anymore. It's so interesting to see how they're able to really land that emotional swing with characters who I didn't hate, I didn't love, I was just like, they are solid characters. But if you were to ask me what is the thing that I love the most, it's my boy Yuji, it's all the other characters in this crazy Cursed Finger story, but I love that every character gets a moment to shine. Panda last week, Panda, come on, who doesn't love the Panda content last week? 
but my, Maki, Nobra, all of them just feel like they had purpose and it was important that not only can you look at the fights in this episode and say, god damn, visually, second to none, looks incredible, still finding new ways to up the ante with the kind of spiritual aura that surrounds either fists or bullets or blades or witch's broom or nails, whatever else it is, they continue to find new ways to really spice it up and feel like they belong in the world of Jujutsu Kaisen, but you can also tell it's a mystical aura, so to speak. And the way they use a 3D camera at times when they're flying through the forest and things, there's so many little details that you can pick apart and say that looks so visually impressive, but then when you figure out why the characters are fighting and what they're fighting for, whether you're trying to protect your friend whose people are trying to assassinate or you're trying to assassinate that person because of your beliefs and you know the role you're supposed to fit but maybe you should break away from that thought process, all the little pieces click to form such a great episode. And honestly, I didn't think I would ever come up here for this arc and say, I hope it doesn't end. And I'm not saying like I want it to last forever, but it's not one of those things that I'm rushing to the end either. School tournament arcs just generally are okay to good at best for me. That's just how I feel. They kind of feel like the thing where like, yeah, they're important because you're trying to progress past a certain obstacle or you need to train, but you usually want to see the next main plot point progress. But seeing the characters and getting the chance, because this really feels like the perfect opportunity to learn about those side characters who you're like, oh, it's a talking panda, don't need any more, then you get that clarification. Clarification between sisters and everything like that. It feels like they're obviously progressing the story, but they're also giving time to flesh out and characterize these characters who you might have thought was a trope or a personality at best, but actually are becoming a person afraid of what they have to do or believe that this is the only way. I love that about Jujutsu Kaisen, is that, yeah, visually, it's fights, it's power system, it's incredible, it hooks us in for that alone but it's the characters that keep it together and the story that surrounds them that turns it into such a compelling masterpiece that you just want to see multiple seasons of. Not to mention, I mean, the OST, they really found a way, I think it's a song we've heard before, but during a lot of the action, there was like a remix or something of one of the soundtracks we've heard. It's just really interesting because generally like electronic or non, I would say, because kind of like my go-to anime music for like background music is either like soft piano scores or like really rock anthems. But the way they're able to incorporate more electronical pieces, it just really, I think, matches what we're seeing. Because when you see, like, glowing blue flames and things like that, it just feels like that's the perfect type of score to use. And the fact that this is a show that's able to use soundtracks that generally I'm not the biggest fan of outside of anime, but the way they're able to incorporate for what we're seeing, it really feels like it knows what it's doing ten times over, and you never feel like, oh, I wish they would have used this soundtrack here, or I wish they would have cleaned up the animation here, or... I wish we would have focused on this character over here. No, it just kind of like builds into this perfect harmony and just always has you craving more, which is all you can really ask for in a show like this. And I don't think many people would deny that fact. Seriously, I just always find new things to appreciate about this show. And I honestly never want an episode to end. It just always hooks me in. It makes me crave the next episode. And it's one of the shows that I always look forward to the most every single week. I'd love to know what everyone thought so on this week's episode. What did you think of the sister storyline, which I would say is probably the best part of the episode? But I mean, that smooth as butter animation is definitely a close second. Let me know whatever you're feeling, though, down below. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, share your support, and hit that subscribe button if you happy new around here. So until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.